we have seen so far that how you can do the hypothesis testing when you do not have any idea about the population right you do not make any assumption about the population and then still you can do the hypothesis testing using the bootstrap method and we saw how you can write the code for them in python also so now we will move on to the parametric case where we consider that it might be possible that you do not know that it is coming from normal rather it is coming from some other known distribution right some other parametric distribution it is not as if in the previous situation where you had no idea about the population so here at least you have an idea about the population from which it is being taken now in such a case if you are still interested in finding out the mean and you want to conduct a two tailed test whether the population mean is not equal to this hypothesized value then in that case also first of all you will be taking a random sample from this distribution suppose it is poisson distribution or it might be your exponential any other distribution so from these you take a the random sample now based on this sample you will find the sample mean and you will denote it by sample mean minus mu not so as we have done earlier only now what we do is that we estimate this theta which is present over here and we write it as theta hat now what you will do is now you will be taking bootstrap samples from this f theta hat so if it is observed mean so you will be taking from distribution with this new theta hat it will not be from f theta so you will now be resampling again and again with replacement from this f theta hat so you will replace whatever the estimate you have obtained you will replace the original theta by this estimate and then you will find out your ti's again you will have the same procedure so xi bar each of them will have the sample mean and then you will subtract the hypothesized value next this step would be same again you will compare the absolute value of this bootstrap statistic with this absolute value of the observed statistic that you have obtained here and then you will compute your p value which is basically the proportion of the observed or your bootstrap test statistic are as extreme as or more extreme than what you have already observed that is your t and finally you would reject the null hypothesis if p is less than equal to alpha otherwise you conclude that you do not have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis so you can see that there is a minor difference from what you have done for the non parametric case here because you are not again sampling from here right this is the sample that you have obtained from some distribution and this distribution has the parameter theta so what you will do you will estimate this parameter and instead of now sampling from this or maybe sampling from this as we have done earlier because in the non parametric case you do not have any idea about the distribution right so you just keep on working with the sample itself now you have an idea about the population from which the sample is being taken but now when you are taking the bootstrap samples you will not consider that it is coming from poison with parameter theta but rather you will estimate you will substitute it at estimated value and from there you will be generating the samples again and again so that is the minor difference from the non parametric to the parametric setup likewise if i change from population mean to suppose variance then also you can find out that right so test for single variance this is sigma not square so what are we going to do we are going to take a sample which is coming from some distribution known distribution other than your normal distribution now what you will do next it is about the variance so you will be calculating the sample variance here and your t will be basically that sample variance minus minus hypothesized value next you are going to generate bootstrap samples from f theta hat right so you will estimate this theta hat and every time you will generate the bootstrap samples from this one keep on doing that and for each sample you will be finding out the sample variance okay once you have obtained the sample variance suppose for t1 to t100 you have found out the sample variances would be there and then you will subtract from each of them you will subtract the sigma not square once you have subtracted and obtained it 
you will take the absolute values of these ti's and you will compare it whether it is greater than the absolute this test statistic or the observed test so ti's are your bootstrap statistics and these are your observed ones finally you will make the comparison you will count the number of times the bootstrap test statistic is greater than or i mean extreme as extreme or more extreme than the observed test statistic and you will find the p value which is basically the proportion and you would reject the null hypothesis so it is again very simple and straightforward likewise if you have two means what you will do in this case you are considering from two different populations and the first one is coming suppose from theta 1 with parameter is theta 1 and here it is theta 2 from for both of them you here you will find the sample mean and here again you will find the sample mean that is y bar suppose it is coming from poison with parameter here it might be suppose lambda 1 or maybe you can say it is 4 and the other one is coming from poison say 5 you will take the samples from them you will calculate the sample means and then you will take the difference of these two because anyhow your d not is zero again you are going to estimate the parameters from your sample that you have and you would replace those theta 1 and theta 2 by their estimates so now you will no longer be sampling from here but rather you will be every time sampling from theta 1 hat and f theta 2 hat okay and once you do that you will calculate sample means each time you take the difference you will get the bootstrap statistic and then you can calculate your i value that is the proportion the p value and you can finally make the decision depending upon whether your p value is less than equal to alpha or not next likewise you can do for the two population variances also so same steps are there here again again you are sampling from two different populations first of all you will calculate their corresponding sample variances you will take the difference right this t will come so as we have done earlier also for the non parametric case similar thing is happening here also then we are estimating it and now the resampling is done from these new distributions right but distributions with your known or estimated theta 1 and theta 2 so here this one would be theta 1 hat and this one would be theta 2 hat so i would be there that is basically is the indicator function over here so whenever it is 1 this is true basically whenever your t i suppose t1 is greater than t then it will give you 1 again suppose if t2 is not greater than equal to t then it will be 0 likewise you can keep on comparing it suppose till 100 and you will find out suppose it is greater than equal to so you will have one so you will count how many times these ones are coming and that basically will be your i and then you will take the proportion i by n and finally you can make the decision whether to reject or not so this is about variance and means that we have seen you can do it for any other statistic in which you are interested and you can consider any distribution and go ahead with it and even if you do not have any idea about the distribution still in the non parametric setup also you can do the hypothesis testing so this is how your bootstrap works whenever you are learning for the hypothesis testing problems so we will see now the codes for these uh, parametric bootstrapping thing and in the next week we will learn about confidence intervals so let us now see how to do hypothesis testing in case you have a distribution other than your normal distribution so we are considering basically parametric bootstrapping process earlier we considered the non parametric situation so when you consider the parametric bootstrap so here let us suppose that we are considering poison distribution so we are going to take the sample from the poison distribution so let me write that for the first of all we are going to check for the mean okay so test for mean in case of poison so first of all let us import numpy as np and from scipy dot stats import poison 
okay because we are going to work with the poisson distribution so now we are going to first generate a known poisson distribution data set so let the sample size or you can first of all consider the true lambda be suppose 3.5 next the sample size let that be 100 and data is going to store your poison random variables which are generated with this true lambda and the size would be same as the sample size that we have and we are specifying the random state to be 42 okay so basically we have obtained x1 x2 x100 so 100 data points from poison 3.5 right so parameter over here lambda is 3.5 now the first thing that we do in parametric bootstrap is that once you have obtained the sample you we have to calculate the observed mean so observed mean that is x bar would be np dot mean of this data right then what will be the or the statistic we have so observed for observed statistic we need the hypothesized mean so let the hypothesized mean be so let me just use a short form hypo hypo mean be 3 okay so this is the hypothesized mean or i could just to comment here that it is mu naught and what do we have to find out we have to find observed statistic that is t so that will be observed mean that is x bar minus mu naught so mu naught is basically hypo mean or in this case it is lambda so we are basically testing for lambda so hypo mean would be so let me just write this comment so this is x bar minus mu naught so we have obtained the first statistic now we have to write the code for the bootstrap sample how we will generate that and we will calculate the bootstrap statistic that is ti's for each of the bootstrap sample that we have obtained so for that let us write the function to generate a bootstrap sample so definition we are going to define bootstrap sample so data with the observed mean that we have taken so observed mean here we are going to specify the sample so sample will be generated from poison with this observed mean and the size of the sample would be same as the length of the data set next for each sample we need to calculate the mean so again we are going to use numpy's mean function and it is going to return the sample mean minus your hypothesized mean okay because ti's are basically xi bars so here these sample means are basically your sample xi bars right for each sample you will have the mean and you have to look at the difference of that sample mean with the hypothesized mean so that will give you ti's now you have to generate n bootstrap statistics so for that let me write bootstrap statistic will be so we need to call this function here for i in range of your n so n let me define n also so i can probably write here n suppose is 1000 okay so it's a large number of bootstrap samples that we are extracting so data observe mean so this is your ti's okay let me just add a comment so these are your ti's so ti's is what xi so let me just write bar xi minus your mu naught so these are your xi's so once you have calculated the bootstrap statistic 
you are ready to find out the p value and what do we do in p value we look at the number of observations in which your bootstrap absolute value of bootstrap statistic is more than the absolute value of observed statistic so ti i mean mod of ti is it greater than or equal to mod of t and then we will see for how many number of times it happens and we will calculate the proportion for that out of total number of bootstrap samples that we have taken so the p value over here would be np dot mean so we have to find out the absolute value for the first one so that is boot strap st is it greater than equal to the absolute value of your observed statistic okay now you will set your alpha alpha is point zero five suppose so we are going to test if p value is less than equal to alpha then you will print reject h not else it will print fail to reject we can also see what are your values here so let me just run this and show okay so this is actually underscore so we fail to reject the null hypothesis here so we can also see what are the values so let me just check what is the p value here oh sorry so p value is 0.537 so obviously it is going to reject because alpha is 0.05 and your observed statistic we can also look at your observed statistic that is 0 0.490 so this is how you can test for mean in case of poisson distribution so the idea is same in both the situations with just the difference here that there you were given a sample in non parametric you have a data set and you do not specify the distribution and you just take the bootstrap samples from there itself now here since we know we are drawing from poisson say 3.5 and we are drawing a sample of size 100 so we specify that okay from this distribution the sample is coming and we specify that okay how do you pr proceed in order to test whether the claim is correct or not so in this case we fail to reject the null hypothesis and we we have obtained the bootstrap statistic by just following these steps which we have done earlier also in the case of non parametric okay so the non in the non parametric the difference was that we were not considering the distribution specifically so likewise we can do for your variance also or let us do for the difference of the two means so we will import numpy as np then from scipy dot stats import poison so because we are considering two populations two poison populations it means we need two two lambdas right so true lambda 1 would be suppose 3.5 and true lambda 2 be 4 okay and the sample size maybe i can just write small n is 100 now we have to draw samples from poison with 3.5 lambda one and from second one will be drawn from poison but with parameter 4 so poison let me just write the command so here random variables here it will be true lambda 1 and size we have specified as n 
replay sorry random state would be again same thing we can do for the second group also so group 2 here the difference will be in this case 2 lambda 2 so we have drawn two, sam two samples from these two populations so here it means you have xi's and these are your yi's y1 y2 yn right now what will be the observed means in this case observed means so observed mean for the first one would be np dot mean group 1 and observed mean 2 would be np dot mean for the second group sorry so you have obtained x bar and y bar okay now you need to check the difference between these two because that will give you the statistic t so for that let me just write observed statistic as the difference between the two observed mean 1 minus observed mean 2 so we are finding out t equal to x bar minus y bar okay so t we have obtained now let me also specify n that is the number of bootstrap samples again we can check for this we will define function to generate a bootstrap so for that bootstrap to sample let me just write so here data would come and the observed mean would come so the sample will be drawn from this updated mean because once you have estimated the parameter then the bootstrap samples will be drawn from the population by substituting this estimated value so here size would be n so the sample mean here would be found out using np dot mean finally it is going to return the sample mean so this i have written for a single sample so i will write this for uh, two different bootstrap statistic that i have to calculate so let me just mention that bootstrap st1 okay so this one would be basically utilizing the function that we have defined over here and here observed mean one we will use and for how many times in this range okay so this for loop will be initiated for 1000 times so this is for the first sample and here we will obtain likewise for the second one okay so here we will write so mean two once we have obtained these these are xi bars and yi bars right because for when we uh, call this function for the first mean so here we will get the corresponding mean for the first one so xi's uh, all the xi's will be there so xi bars in fact because this is a sample mean and here we will get the yi bars now what we have to do we have to take the difference so ti is basically xi bar minus yi bar so maybe i can write that again here bootstrap st would be the difference minus this st2 now we can calculate your p value so p value here would be calculated using this we will consider the absolute value of this bootstrap statistic that we have and we will compare this value with the absolute value of here it will be observed 
So if alpha is again 0 0.05, we can check if it is going to reject the null hypothesis or not. So we can probably make use of this same command. Okay. So when you run, let us see what will you get. Sorry, so this is an array actually. So I should not do it in this way. So let me just comment it down here. So I did it in a hurry. So let me replace this. So one second. One minus. This is an array actually. So let me just mention here np dot array for bootstraps st1 minus np dot array bootstrap 2 sorry st2 so first of all these arrays the differences corresponding differences and then the absolute value would be taken so let me just yeah, so you get fail to reject the null hypothesis and the p-value is 0 0.52. So obviously it is obviously much more than. So you can see that what we have done primarily and what is the difference from the previous one that we were considering only a single sample, right? That is why here only itself we subtracted the hypothesized mean from the sample mean. But when we are considering two samples and the two populations, so here you don't have to subtract the hypothesized mean because that would eventually get cancelled when you take the difference of these two. So we are just finding out xi bars and yi bars and then we are taking their corresponding differences.